Seekers. That was Low Rider by War, which many of you first heard in Up in Smoke, the Cheech and Chong movie. And don't judge me. This was given to me by my mother-in-law, this t-shirt. I don't know why she gave me this t-shirt, but one day for Christmas, or one Christmas, she gave me this. So there you go. So Low Rider by War. All right, so there you go. That was my elaborate video for Lowrider by War. I hope it turned out all right because I haven't edited it, edited it yet, so we'll see how it turns out. And for today's 420 special, because it's April the 20th, 420 in American parlance, I guess that would be uh, 24 if you're in Great Britain or some other country where they do it that way. But it's 420 here. It's 420 somewhere, isn't that what people always say? I thought I would answer a question that I got in the emails that I was at first thinking, should I answer this one on camera? I mean, I answered the guy in the email, but I thought, eh. but then I thought, oh, well, I'm doing a video on 420, so let's, uh, let's see if I can answer it. And the question is, should you do Zazen while you're high? So let's see if I can answer that. But I'm, first I'm going to change my glasses because these are non-prescription. <laughs> I can't see what I'm looking at here. All right, now I can see better. So uh, the question, should you uh, do Zazen while you're high? Well, first I want to go back over the fifth grave precept. If you remember back from about a year ago, I did a whole series on all of the different precepts. And there's 10 Buddhist precepts. And precept number five is... I'm going to read you a few different versions. Literally, it means do not sell liquor, but there are... Uh, it, it's generally understood that the reason it says do not sell liquor is because uh, the original precept had been do not, do not use liquor, do not use alcohol, and that it might have been changed when the precepts started being used in China where people were using uh, alcohol medicinally to try to keep warm and, and other things. But it's, it's generally understood to, to mean don't cloud the mind with intoxicants. And so let's see, uh, let's see some of the different versions of it. Uh, not dealing in drugs, that's Robert Aitken. I vow not to misuse drugs or alcohol, but to keep the mind clear. That is the Great Vows and Monasteries version. A follower of the way does not intoxicate self or others, but rather cultivates and encourages clarity. That's from Nonin. Polishing clarity, dispelling delusion. These are the clear mind precepts. I'm not sure where they come from. Do not be ignorant is uh, Maizumi Roshi's version. Uh, a follower of the way does not intoxicate oneself or others. That's Katagiri Roshi's version. And Philip Kaplow gives us not to cause others to use liquors or drugs that confuse or weaken the mind and not to do one do so oneself. So there's a there's a variety of different interpretations of that in English, but basically I think the message is pretty pretty clear. Don't get high. That being said, the questioner who asked me the question asked me about whether if you were if you were high, you should not do zazen. There's only been one instance in my life where I have done zazen while high, so let me tell you about that. Oh, there's a cop helicopter over there monitoring what I'm saying about this. Anyway, what happened was this. My nephew was over, and my nephew, when I say nephew, I don't mean a child. I mean, he was a child at one time, but at this point he was 28, 29, maybe even 30 years old and he was visiting me and he's a big stoner and I don't know what to do about that but he's like one of these wake and bake guys you know he's he's uh, smoking weed from morning till night so I was hanging out with him and he was like oh come on share a little with me and I'm like okay uh, I'll, I'll have a little bit and, and I smoked up some with him smoked up that sounds like really bad old-timey slang anyway so I smoked some weed with him but I'd forgotten that I was supposed to lead Zazen that night at, at the, the center that I was uh, doing Zazen at, at the time. So, so here I was high and the time was coming up for me to do this thing and I thought, well, do I, do I cancel? Because I don't know if they could get another speaker. I was supposed to not only lead the Zazen but give the lecture that night. Man, these cops. Leave me alone, cops! So anyway, where was I in the story? I thought about whether I should cancel and leave them hanging for a speaker or just go do it, and I thought, well, it'd be better if I just did it, you know, and just showed up. 
Ziggy's barking at the oh Ziggy's barking at the bird who's on the roof. Ziggy, don't bark at the bird. That bird's a nice bird. So anyway, uh, let's see. So I I was thinking whether well, should I do it, anyway? and I decided to just go do it. And my experience of doing zazen while high and then doing a lecture on Buddhism while high was that Ziggy, shh, 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 don't bother the bird. Was that it was weird and I didn't like it. And I didn't really like sitting while high, especially. By the, the, we sit first and we do the lecture after. So by the time we got to the lecture, Ziggy, shh, shh, don't bother the bird. So by the time we got to the lecture, Ziggy, don't bother the bird. Anyway, so by the time we got to the lecture, it had mostly worn off. And I, I think I did an okay lecture. And I wasn't like, hey, dude, the Buddha is cool, man. <laughs> He's like... Zen, you know. I didn't do one of those lectures. I did a normal lecture. But I didn't like sitting while high. It was weird and it didn't feel right. One of the problems, though, I think for people who would ask a question like this is that drugs like marijuana and and LSD and shrooms and things will tend to give you this kind of false sense that you're having great revelations. The problem with the great revelations that you have when you're high is they're pretty useless. I mean, if there were great revelations that were useful to come out of being high, then, you know, Timothy Leary and Richard Alper Ram Dass and all these people would have come up with great revelations. So Ram Dass was pretty good, but only after he stopped using the drugs. Timothy Leary, you know, I've read some of his work and, you know, what does he say that's so profound? It, do, it, doesn't really, uh, it doesn't really go anywhere. And there's a reason why you're supposed to do your zazen straight, without alcohol, without drugs of any kind, without any of that. Because what you're trying to see is the reality of this moment as it is. And any sort of alteration you make to the moment with drugs or alcohol or any other, Ziggy, stop bugging that bird any other substance like that just kind of gets in the way of seeing what's here and now as it is. The other problem with any sort of revelation that you get when you're high is that you always come down. This is the thing that, that to me, I, I don't know if I ever convey this properly, but to me it is, it, it is what says it all about this idea of having some kind of enlightenment experience from a drug, or even if that drug is a natural substance like marijuana or mushrooms or something like that, uh, peyote, whatever, uh, ayahuasca, is that you always come down. You always end up right back here. And to me, that is really crucial. And, and I really don't know if I've ever conveyed this properly, but I always try, is why do you always end up back here? If if this state of being high is somehow the enhanced state, the, you know, the, the, the state where you know it all, then why do you end up back here every time? Uh, Ram Das relates this story in one of his books, I forget which one, maybe it's Be Here Now, but about uh, him and a group of acid LSD researchers in the 60s who were trying to stay high forever or, or just as long as possible. And what happened is that the effects of the drug always wore off. So like you could take a micro dot and be high for 12 hours. So you'd think if you kept taking you know, acid every 12 hours, you'd never stop being high. But that isn't what they found. They found that after a while, no matter how much LSD they imbibed they they would come down they would they would come down it would it just couldn't last and I think that says a lot about what the the universe wants from us if you want me to sound new agey and all that is that what we are here for is to experience this unaltered unhigh state and what Zazen is about is finding that unaltered unhigh state just as it is and 
deeply diving into that because what you find is that it contains everything. It even contains the state of being high, being as high as you want, as being the highest in the universe, being something that absorbs and creates the entire universe. That's what this, this ordinary not high at all state contains. And if you use a drug well, you may get the illusion of that for a temporary period, but you don't get the reality of that. And that's, that's what I think is the problem with the, the drug thing. Now, just to get back, you know, uh, circle back to the original question, I think if, if you're in a situation like I was and you forgot that you were supposed to do Zazen later on and you're already high, then just go do the Zazen. If you're uh, coming home from a night on the town or whatever and you're still a little tipsy and you're wondering whether you should do your Zazen for the night if you're one of those people like me who does Zazen every evening, I'd say do it. Just do it. Do it even while you're high. But, you know, for the most part, avoid being high when you're doing zazen because it's going to make it's going to make zazen weird and freaky and you might kind of get uh, you know and you might start bothering other people with uh, with freaking out and stuff and i wouldn't recommend it it's also zazen tends to kind of let loose a lot of the mental stuff so if you if that happens while you're high you're probably going to be less able to handle it and the final thing i want to say about this is one of the versions of the fifth precept is do not use drugs that cause heedlessness and that's the one that really stuck in my mind because every time I am on any sort of a drug I find that I'm more likely to make poor decisions. One of the other versions of the precepts that's in here uh, says that you are, you're being straight, you're avoiding drugs is a gift you give to others and I've related how someone who is part of my life these days, not my wife, by the way, just in case people are starting to speculate, but somebody who's kind of in my circle these days is an addict. And this is something that I have trouble understanding. It's one of the things I, you know, for all the stuff that's happened with Noah Levine, I really do appreciate the way he is able to come from the standpoint of being an addict and being a Buddhist and being able to work with it. Because I'm absolutely the opposite of an addict. Because the only drug I've ever enjoyed is marijuana, and the only level of marijuana I can enjoy is the smallest <laughs> level. You know, if I if I have more than a, a couple of tokes or whatever the kids are calling them these days, it just gets weird, and I don't like it. I don't like having alcohol. I didn't like LSD. I don't like any drug that I've ever been on. I don't. I don't really think the experience is pleasant, except you know. For, for example, of tiny amounts of marijuana sometimes feel good. That's it. But this person who's in my life, he's an addict, and and he uh, he'll do he'll he'll get he'll go on a bender of drinking, and then spend the next three or four days, maybe a week, vomiting because he, it hurts his stomach. His stomach it does can't take the alcohol, and yet he does it again and again. So. I can see how the compulsion to do drugs can be very strong in some people, and that's one of the reasons I think we should avoid it. And the trouble this guy causes me whenever he's on drugs is incredible. And when he's not, he's a dream. He's great to be around. I love hanging around this guy when he's sober, but when he's high, he's a nightmare. And so think of your not being high as a gift you give so that you are not burdening others with your stupidity that you get when you're on drugs, which, you know, I can attest to, even, even myself, I get stupid when any of these substances are running through my body. So there you go. That's my answer to whether you should get high, no, whether you should do Zazen while high, my 420 special. I hope you enjoyed Low Rider. I had fun putting it together. Uh, we'll see you next time. Uh, here is my URL for my donations, hardcorezen.info slash donate. That is hardcorezen.info slash donate. There you will find links to my PayPal and Patreon accounts. Those are my only way of making a living. And as I've been saying, I've been doing my taxes recently, finally sent them in. And I can see very clearly that your donations are what is keeping me afloat, so I really appreciate it. But as always, you don't got to donate if you don't want to donate, because this is offered for free. We will see you next time. Have a good time all the time. Stay straight.
Thanks, Ziggy. Ziggy, why do you bother that bird? Why don't you like that bird being on the roof? It's a nice bird. It doesn't hurt you. Stop barking at the bird. Just let him be. Herbie, it's a girl. There's a pair of birds and they're nesting right now. All right, Ziggy, you're already gone. <laughs>